So in today's video, we're going to take a look at this uh, Velika 28 volt 7 amp, so 200 watt power supply. This has been incredibly cheap, and as you can see from the outside, it looks really nice. Right, the finish on the aluminum, any, any scratches are inflicted by myself, so uh, don't mind the missing screws, those I've taken out just to simplify the teardown. Um, yeah, so very nice, so 17 bucks for 200 watts, not too bad, right? And I got this for uh, got this for my Mac Cube, which uh, I've gotten without a power supply. So yeah. And uh, right, because apparently my Cube is quite upgraded, so it's three times as powerful as the one it, it's supposed to be. So someone really upgraded. I I don't want to fuck it up, right? And so first thing I did is as one should do with uh, main stuff from China especially as I opened it up right so the construction is very similar to the Meanwell power supplies right just some screws in different locations and the top slides off again very nice attention to detail uh, on the casing right which right, good good marketing what can I say and then you get some more screws out and then this drops out this is relatively thin, and I suppose if you want to draw 7 amps from it, then it is going to be insufficient. But the Mac uh, has originally a 7 point something amp power supply, 28 volts, so 205 watts-ish. Uh, but it never draws more than 2 watts, right? So that's usually for the monitor that's connected to it that passes through and uses the same supply anyway. Enough with that. Um, so first thing I do is I see the caps, right? These are the caps it came with. And these are the shittiest, shittiest secondhand caps one could find in the Shenzhen market, I'm pretty sure. Um, on the bottom, they're dirty, right? So on the, on the, between the pins, there's literal grime, right? Like from standing outside for a prolonged period of time, this like brown dust type of deal. Probably also from having been rained on and right the caps do work right so they both show around 450 440 microfarads which isn't that bad right but given that they're across the mains and they're kinked i don't know not too not too good so i have changed them and i've also swapped two of these uh output uh capacitors i've left this one on i think i don't i didn't have three of these or i just got bored uh who knows I think I was just eager to get it get it working, right? So I put it, I, I set it up, right? You can tweak it and it has a very large range, so from 20 to 30 volts. Tweak it to 28.5, right? It comes for some drop across the wire, so the Mac gets its uh, required 28 volts. Um, I played around, I think, 20 minutes. And then I unplugged it completely. I unplugged the wire, went somewhere else. The power supply was enclosed with all the screws and everything. I come back. It's no longer working. I'm kind of strange, right? So I, first of all, I panicked that I fucked my Mac up. I powered the Mac up from my lab supply. That's fine. Um, sigh of relief, etc. And then I measured the output of this. And it was 8 volts. But like a steady 8 volts that you could load down. So I'd put like 5 ohms across it, 2 ohms across it. Like whatever, like 1 amp, 500 milliamps. It would keep the 8 volts, right? So... All of a sudden, it was it was basically from 7 or 6.5 to 8 point something volts. Instead of 20 to 30, right? So I get pissed off. But again, I probably shouldn't have, right? So 16, uh, $16, $17, including shipping from China. I mean, what can you expect, right? I, I really didn't know, right? This is the first supply I got. The board is dirty and all the crap, right? But it did work initially and didn't make any high pitch noise. The inductor seems relatively thick. I don't know, right? So not terribly unimpressive, but when it stops working after literally half an hour, then it's pretty bad. So I submit a formal complaint to refund request to AliExpress and they give me the money back within like 12 hours, I think. So I get the full 16, 17 dollars back. I also gave it a two star review, which I probably should downgrade a one star because that two star was when it worked and um yeah right so 
I get my money back. I ordered a different one, and it's been a busy couple of a couple of weeks. So I just now got into trying to trying to look more in depth at at fixing it. And there's there's one thing that struck me first of all, right? And this is uh, since I've uh, since I've I forgot to say this initially. This resistor here is a 100 ohm resistor, so I'm pretty much I'm like 50% colorblind, so I'm really bad at resistor codes and so on, but I did measure it and it was fine. Uh, 100 ohms. And this is straight across the output. This is straight across the output. So when you put the output at 30 volts, you have 30 volts across a, a 100 ohm resistor. So you're basically dissipating 10 watts or 9 watts. I think I did the math. You should be well above the rating of this resistor. I mean, it's Uh, this is basically just, I, I believe, loading the output down, right? So it just takes two leads from, from the output and brings them over to the uh, control board. Um, that's pretty much it, right? So the control board takes uh, three pins from the low side, and that is V plus, V minus, and voltage adjust, which is simply uh, through this uh, potentiometer. Right? That's how what what it needs to regulate the supply, right? So given that I, I saw a steady 8 volts that I could adjust successfully, that I could load down, and then if I would short the outputs, it would go into overcurrent protection. So everything seemed more or less fine with this, with the diodes, with the transistors, the MOSFETs, whatever they are. So then I looked at this, um, this optocoupler, and as it turns out, this optocoupler has shit the bed and... It still measures one volt across the uh, across the LED side, right? So across the low side. Uh, so the red LED seems to be fine, but something might have happened with the diode, or the LED is has been overdriven and is less bright now. So actually, this is what I what got me into thinking the the optocoupler is is faulty. Is you know when you over overcurrent LEDs, they first of all go brighter, 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 and they go dimmer, right? And then they stay at that dim level. So if something might have somehow overcurrented this um, optocoupler, or who knows, maybe something fucked the diode on the high side, who knows? Um, point is, I uh, actually have the original Mac power supply, which was busted and I couldn't fix it. And this did have two optocouplers. Uh, and I would assume most optocouplers are roughly the same spec, right? Because they have this infrared or red LED, which has a, about a one volt drop across it. So I don't know what, what's the worst that can happen. So I plug it in and now it does actually work, right? So if you get a, a supply that uh, somehow outputs a way lower voltage or perhaps a way higher voltage, uh, you might actually, uh, on these boards that have the, the little riser controller board, kind of kind of funky, so it says controller mini board. Let's see if I can. Alright, general driver mini board, and you cannot find these online. But what is also nice is they marked out the, uh, the pins, right? So, gates, VCC, V plus, V minus, right, and uh, VR, which... Uh, is the is the cap basically is the potentiometer and so yeah I'm gonna put this back together I'm probably gonna change these caps again right uh, these I changed back for the complaint right just to show the more or less original um, layout and yeah put it into service again see what happens and if anything does happen again I will come back but anyway so low output voltage check the optocoupler, perhaps change it. It works with the optocoupler out, but it outputs about 50 volts, so you're gonna fry the, fry the output caps. All right, so have a good one, guys.